about three praises down here that have come down here and give God a praise for Tony's healing in advance. Come on. I just need about three of y'all. Come on. Come on, high five three people and tell them I'm going to step into my moment. I'm going to step into my moment. I'm going to step. I'm going to step. I'm going to step into my moment. The rest of the story, the rest of the story, y'all will know it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Esther went into that court. She said, listen here, king. Haman has laid a plot. 
to kill all the Jews. And that ain't right. And because she had favor with the king. Y'all read the story when you get home. I challenge you to read the book of Esther today, this week. She went into that court, talked to that king. Not only did the king spare all of the Jews, but that trap that Haman had called himself. Haman, Haman got hung by the very trap. He said, y'all, 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 y'all missed your shout. Y'all missed your shout. Somebody that's been setting a trap for you is about to get hung by that very trap while you walk in victory. step into my moment. One woman. <laughs> One woman. One woman saved the whole nation. How much more can we say these United States of America by all of this power if we just step <laughs> into our moment, everybody standing. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Everybody knew that I was working in the hood, so if the kids did wrong, I could chastise. Right, <laughs> right. But it's different nowadays. Right. So I was asked if everybody that's involved with children, any kind of way, would talk to their children about their conduct, yes. riding the buses and in the school. Talk to them about them buses. Amen. You would not believe I have been brought before of what the kids say in these letters and things. Mm -hmm. And you would swear it is coming from me. But it's coming from kids that's in first, second grade. Wow. You would not believe it. You would not believe it. Would be 
the dirt on the stoop. Mm-hmm. And the other kids making a curtain around them to protect them. Wow. So please talk to your children. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. How many of y'all know that's good wisdom right there? Because you know what? It, it, here it is. We can get as mad as we want to at the police. We can try to turn this into some racial something or other. But the reality is there was in every case something that was ille- some sort of illegal activity. Don't get quiet on me now. Now, I'm not saying anybody deserved to die. I'm not saying that at all. But we got to start every every auntie, every big mama, grandmama, nana, grandpa. If you are connected to a child, you need to be having a serious conversation. And it, and, and, and don't be don't be fooled. Them little them little jokers. They understand. They know what's going on. Amen. Don't, don't you buy that lie. Well, she's so young, I'll wait. Because if you wait, you're going to miss your opportunity to plant a seed. I, I, I told y'all last Sunday, I am a mother. That's, that's our son sitting on the drums. I, would, I, I don't want nobody to shoot him. But I have a responsibility as a mother to teach him. And we, we always taught him, if the police pull you over, keep your hands where they can see him. If you got to reach in your pocket to get something, tell them first, my license are in my pocket. Can I get them? My, my registration is in my glove compartment. Can I get it? Hello? And I just read something the other day. I didn't know this, but, but I just read something the other day that in at least two of those cases, y'all hear me well. In two of those cases, the boys was reaching to pull their pants up. If they had been wearing them right in the first place, hello, don't send me no text messages, no emails. I'm, uh, it, it's right and it's true. If their pants had been where they were supposed to be with a belt, something, they might not have had to be reaching for their pants and they might still be alive. Because we, the truth of the matter is, we got some police officers that are scared. And they, and they got, and come on somebody, and they have a right to be scared. My husband worked, he wasn't a police officer, but he worked in law enforcement. And just because he was connected to the courts. I was always worried about him. I always worried about somebody carrying a gun into the court and spraying up the whole courtroom while he in there bailiffing. So I understand their fear. One day I was at home. You have to know your folk. One day I was at home. Guy knocks on the door. He says, Mrs. Collins. I said, yes. He said, "Um, I come to borrow your water hose. He said, your husband said I could borrow the water hose because I'm going to start a car wash business. Well, I knew my husband. I knew he hadn't told nobody they could borrow nothing. So when he said, my husband told him he could borrow the water hose to start the car, I said, no, he didn't. He, I ain't got to ask him. I know my husband. He ain't told you you come get no hose here. Come to find out, come to find out, it was a man that Mike had done his pre-sentence investigation. The judge sent the boy to jail. He got out of jail and came after me and my husband. So I understand why they're scared. Because you don't never know what you're going to get into. So I'm, I'm thankful there's been a new, a new review, uh, a, a, a national um, police commission review team put together. And from those, for those of you that are from Akron and some of you here, um, Bishop Joy Johnson has been selected. Mike, Attor- a, Attorney General Mike DeWine put together a commission for the state of Ohio to review police policies and actions and so forth. And Bishop Joy Johnson is on that commission. Amen. Now see, that's how God that's how God does stuff. He put a godly man 
in a place of influence that can speak from both sides of the issue. That's how you get stuff resolved. Not looting and robbing and burning down stores. Now them folk ain't got no job, can't go to work. And you done tore up your own neighborhood. Now what? Let me stop before I start getting hate mail. Right. You couldn't get to the corner store. Now you got to go 10 miles to one because you done burnt down the one that was there. God, listen, let me say this. God is still in control. I shared with you all last week. I had a person talking about, well, shouting and running and going to church don't seem to be helping. I'm like, you must be some kind of crazy. I'm going to shout the more. I'm going to pray the more. Because our God is God. And he's still in control. Do y'all receive that? Do y'all believe that God is in control over all of our lives? I said this in Bible study and I'm closing. The only color God is interested in is red. The color of his son's blood. That's the only color that matters to him. If you covered in that, the rest of it is gravy. Amen. So mothers, grandmamas, teach your kids. Great grandmamas. Let's 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 teach our kids. Let's teach them a more excellent way. Amen. I I, I have a grandson that uh, know how to use words. He know how to use them compound cuss words at six but it's up to me to teach him it's up to his parents to teach him a more excellent way somebody say a more excellent way can we heed what mother said can we teach our kids to get on the bus and sit down and behave and respect see we got to get back to uh, we got to get back to something mother said because see I grew up under that era she was talking about I grew up under that era that if Miss Susie saw you cutting up she could whoop you. And then when you got home, you got another whoop because Miss Susie had to whoop you. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Somewhere along the line, we got real crazy, and now we don't want nobody to say nothing to our kids. Newsflash, you ain't raising no angels. When your kids get a certain age, Mariah, you, me, Diane, we can relate. When your kids get a certain age, they, they start telling you all the stuff they did that you didn't know they did. And you'd be like, really? Right. There's some stuff little Mike has told me. I'm like, now, I could have just lived the rest of my life without knowing that. <laughs> but I'm thankful. So yes, we're gonna let we gonna let you know President Obama and all of them people, they they are paying attention. All them folk marching in Washington yesterday, they gotta do something. Amen. But all the responsibility ain't theirs. It still starts at home. And if your kids are grown, invest in somebody else's. Amen. Amen. Invest in somebody else's. It's never too late. You've got good wisdom. All right, we're going to move it to, it's, a, it's about 10 till 12. I'm going to ask, I've asked Prophetess Rhonda. I'm going to ask Minister Owen and Prophetess Patty. If you three will come, the instructions were to be praying for men, all men. that Because they're just, you know, because if men are out of place, uh, how many of y'all know when the man is out of place, the whole house is out of place? Amen. So we just want to pray for men. Is that all right? Come on, Prophetess Rhonda, if you'll come first, Minister Owens, and then Prophetess Patty. Y'all can stand or sit, but don't flee. Father, we're so grateful for your word today. And we're so grateful, God, that we live in a nation where we can freely stand and pray. And because we have this weapon, oh God, we will use it to affect kingdom order in the earth realm, oh God. 
Now you set and you predestined and you preordained. Everything was already set into motion long ago before any of us, man, woman, or child, ever came to the earth. And God, you said in your divine order that man was the head of the household, oh God. That's your divine order. That's kingdom principle for the men of our nation, oh God. You've proven yourself faithful during the times, according to your word, O oh God, when fathers weren't fathers to us. And you said in your word, God, that you would be a father to the fatherless. And in the areas where fathers have forsaken their children, O oh God, you have taken them up. I'm living proof that you're father to the fatherless. And I thank you for who you are as the man and head of my life. But because your divine order says it's to be done a more excellent way, because your divine order says, God, that our men should be praying over our children, that they should be leading the household, that they should be treating their women and loving them as Christ loves the church, oh God. You set it in order. These are not our rules. And we know and we understand the season and the time that we're in, God, that it's perilous times, that things have changed, and because we've forsaken you and because we've turned our backs on you, oh God, certain things are transpiring. But as children of God, God, we also know and understand that your word is true and that if we do it your way and if we do it as you've instructed us, oh God, then things can be different in the lives of your people, in the life of a believer. I do not have to adapt to the DNA of natural man, oh God. And the men of this nation need to take their place in their kingship from the kingdom of heaven, oh God, and stop looking to the natural ways of provision and turn back to their God. You said, oh God, the heart of the king is in your hand. You can move it. You can turn it any way you desire. And so I call for you, oh God, to massage with your hand the hearts and the minds of the men of this nation, oh God. I call them back to you. And I say, oh God, if there's nothing else we can do, we can speak your heart and your word and you'll go because your word will not return void unto you. We know, oh God, that even now, hearts of men are changing just because we're coming into agreement with your word, oh God. We know, oh God, wherever they are, that you can go and deal with them, and you can change their heart, no matter what their daddy did, no matter what the men they've seen have done, no matter what they've witnessed, oh God, there is a more excellent way, and we call the men of this nation into that more more excellent way. Oh God, we call forth men that will honor you in their households. We call forth men that will pray over their children. We call forth men that will take their family to church. We call forth men, oh God, that will stand as an example in the earth. We call forth men, oh God, that will love and not only teach their own children, but as they observe what's going on in the earth, oh God, they will correct others as well. If we don't stand, then no one will, Father. If we aren't accountable, if we aren't responsible, oh God, and we understand your commission and our mission, oh God, we thank you. There's going to be testimonies as of this day because a whole nation, the power of agreement, the enemy knows the power of agreement, but your people have forsaken the power of agreement. If we would just get it, oh God, that if we stand in unity, if unity works for evil, then unity works for good, oh God. And I call your men into unity, oh God. Men that will encourage one another. Men that will be there for one another. Men that will speak in one another's ear. Anoint their eyes, oh God. If it's fixed on you, they can't see another, oh God. If their hearts are fixed on you, they won't wander to another, oh God. Strengthen their walk with you. Bring them, I call the men of this nation, into true relationship with the living God. God. In Jesus' name, it shall be so. I decree and declare according to your word and your spirit. According to your word and your spirit, oh God, we believe and trust you. Father God, we thank you for the power and the privilege and the gift of prayer. God, we thank you that your word tells us if, if my people would call my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. In turn, you would hear from heaven. You would forgive.
forgive of our sins and that you would heal the land. Father God, the land needs healing and the land needs our men to do so. God, I thank you because we are considered an endangered species. If we look into our churches and we see that the men are more absent than present, God, you never meant for it to be this way. But if we look to where those men are, the majority of them are incarcerated, which is, again, not what you intended for them to be. But, Father God, I'm praying right now that even in the name of Jesus that those men that are incarcerated right now, that you begin to deal with their hearts and their minds, Father God, and allow them to know that even from the prison walls, they can be an impact on their children, on their nieces, on their nephews, all that time they have there, Lord God, that they can write a, a, a word of encouragement to them and let them know, Lord God, that, that prison is not the place for the men. Father God, we thank you because, see, it is a trick of the enemy. It has been a trick from a long time ago, even with Herod that wanted to kill up all the men. God, we are not naive to know that there are some Herods that are still around today that are trying to kill up the men, Father God, that are trying to take the men from their rightful place, and that is being in your presence, God, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, that we have a sense right now of urgency, God, to take back what the enemy has tried to steal from us. God, we have a, a spirit of urgency right now, Father God, to lift up the men right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Those, Father God, even on the out right now, many men are struggling with addiction, Lord God, be it drug addiction, be it alcohol addiction, be it, be it, be it pornography, Lord God, be it whatever it is, Lord God, be it whatever it is, Father God, but nothing is too hard for you. God, we pray that you will put some people in their path, Lord God, that will speak a word of encouragement to them, Lord God, and let them know that you are the way, that you are the truth, and that you are the light, Lord God. God, we thank you for men today. We thank you for our lives today, Father God. God, we pray that you will just stir up the gift of God in them right now. And let them know that it is not too late, Father God, for them to repent and come to you, Lord God. To repent and turn to you, Father God. That we call the men back in the name of Jesus today, God. Help them to know, Father God, that you are there. That you are ready, willing, and able to forgive us, Lord God. And put us right back where you called us to be in the first place. In our homes, Lord God. In the lives of our children. In the lives of our grandchildren, Lord God. In the lives of our community, oh God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that you're raising up community and rec centers, Lord God. That men can be a vital part, Lord God. That we can, we can speak a word to the children, Lord God. And, and let them know that you are the way, God. We bless you right now for this opportunity. Even as churches are united all over this land and country, Lord God. For one purpose, Lord God, to know that you are God, and besides you there is none other. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Father God, we lift our men up to you all across the nation, oh God. Father, we ask that you reach down and grab them, oh God. Reach down and grab them, Father. Father, a lot of our men, as we come to know them, they struggle themselves with fear, identity confusion, and not knowing what to do with their lives. Father, they chose the route of selling drugs, trying to get young girls to solicit for money. Father, I'm asking you, They've created a mindset that they can beat the system. Father, help them. Give them another glance of the guys in the penitentiary. Let them see the proof positive that they cannot beat the system. Father, even our young boys, five, six, seven, eight, nine, who are looking at these older boys and they see the money they see the cars they see the glamour they see the girls they see the clothes the shoes they see all of that and th they want it 
and then some of the older ones are, are crazy enough to offer it to the younger ones. So, Father, we ask right now that you prick and penetrate the hearts of these men, oh God. Father, change them, Father. Have them to turn from their wicked ways. Father, show them you. Father, let the younger people be able to look at them and see you and not the hard life, oh God. Father, I talked earlier about that secret place. Father, I'm asking you, oh God, a lot of our men are fearful. They don't know which way to go. But Father, introduce them to that secret place. Father, show them how to cry out, to reach out. Father, even when they don't know the words, we know that you know what's on their heart. Father, in that moment, Father, swipe them up, oh God. Change their hearts, change their minds, and make them new creatures. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. We ask, Father, that even the men that are in prison, we ask that you continue to change their ways as they're in prison. Not have them in there having the same mindset, trying to do better what they did before they got there. Father, help them to be rehabilitated so that they may come out and rehabilitate others. Father, it doesn't have to come down to shootings and killings. They just need to know you. Father, and even in the homes where the young boys are, teenagers, Father, help the parents to be able to deal with these young boys. Father, give them what to say and how to say it. Father, Teach the parents how to bring them into your house. Introduce them to you. So that on occasions when they're introduced, the things are not like you. They'll have the strength within them to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's wrong. But Father, only you can do that. Oh, God. It's sad. It's a sad situation. But God, you're in control. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so, Father, we all stand in agreement that this nation will change. And that we are praying all across this nation for change. And we believe in our hearts. You said if two or three agree, but we have thousands. And we ask, Father, right now, Father, that this whole nation and society be changed from this second on. And we just say thank you, Father. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for change. Thank you for you. Thank you for waking up the eyes of your men to see you. Thank you for showing them that there's another way. Thank you for show, helping them to receive the new way. Father, I just say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And it's in your name, Son, Christ Jesus' name, that we pray it all. Amen. 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 As a father, in closing, we lift up every man that is already in the body of Christ. Every man that is already a soldier in your army, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that they not become weary in well-doing, but that you will even today refresh and revive and strengthen your men, oh God. That even the more they're going to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. That even the more they're going to take on their rightful role as kings and priests. That even the more, Father, they're going to be the example in their household. Father, I pray for every pastor today that has come into agreement with this, with this Solidarity Sunday. 
that Father, as a result of this day, as a result of our prayers, as a result, as a result of the preached word that's going across this nation, that this nation shall see change. We lift up the President of the United States, oh God. We pray for President Obama that you continue to give him wisdom, that you continue to give him knowledge, and that you encamp around him, Father, godly people that will give him good wisdom. Father, we just say thank you because we know, oh God, that our God is great. And so we do not have hung, hung down heads, but we are full of expectancy over what you are going to do. We say to you today, Father, use us as only you can, as instruments of change in this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you agree, come on, put your hands together. Amen. 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 I guess I should open the doors of the church. Amen. So if there is one to our live stream audience, again, thank you for joining us each week. Give us a shout out. You can reach us at email, kgfcmansfield at gmail.com. Or you can hit us on Facebook, Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church. Let us know if these services are being a blessing to you. The doors of the church are open at this time.